G'day guys, Menace here with another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Look at this world. Look at this beautiful world. Armitage just left the game. I just saw him here before, but hey, check this out. So this is my, well, this is the start of this video. This video is going to be a little bit action packed. And I wanted to start off by showing you this design that I come up with. This cool looking car. Looks kind of like a double decker bus, doesn't it? Let's go jump on. So you got to jump on the back here. There's two seats because Armitage and I were driving around in it. And this thing is really actually very useful. It has a very tight turning circle because as you can see, I have, I guess, uh, the two, two sets of turning wheels. Instead of just having fixed wheels at the back, I've actually got turning wheels at the back as well as at the front. And they're both uh, inverted, so they're opposite each other. The front and the back are different. All right, now that is not all this thing can do. This, as you can see at the front there, you see those two little switches? They are connected to my keyboard, which you simply do by uh, by hooking them up to a seat like that, and they have the numbers. See, one and two, so you can control things while you're driving. And while we're driving, I'm going to show you something awesome. We're going to scroll out, we'll hold alt, we can scroll out, and we can just do this. Whoa, almost stacked it, it's a scissor lift! How cool is that? We need to really stop, because the center of gravity goes woof, way out the window once we do that. But you can, you can navigate this thing slowly. Oh, you just need to be very careful when you drive it. Obviously, it's not safe. I mean, safety is a big thing here in the scrap mechanic world, and we're about to flip over. So we won't want to do that, but we need to warn other people that we are doing work in the area. So I've set up some hazard lights. You can see down the bottom there. <laughs> it's quite simple. It's just bearings with the four lights. I love that idea. But obviously, when you are, are driving around with the, uh, with the scissor lift detracted, things are a bit easier to navigate but this would be great for building i mean you could change obviously you don't want all the safety railings around here because you couldn't build anything but you could use this in your world when you when you build it if you guys have already bought the game by the way it's out you should definitely go and get a copy if you've been enjoying these videos so i'll show you again how this all pretty much works we press number one and shoot up just like that it's awesome absolutely awesome fun and this gave me an idea which will lead into another map in a minute where i've built something else but I really just want to kind of get under here and, and show you the nuts and bolts of how this one actually works. So there's one, two, three, four, five arms, I believe. Yep. And they're all joined by bearings. And those bearings are all connected up with the controller. So if we jump out, we go down here. You can see all sorts of stuff happening in here. We've got all of our bearings connected up to the chair, which is the green one. Um, our switch is hooked up to the lights, which are all these orange ones here. And then if we go over to the controller, which is over here somewhere. It's here. We've got our controller right here. And as you can see, we've got 45 degrees on the first bearing, 90 on the rest, 45 on the last one. So everything retracts by 90 degrees. The top two, they counteract each other, which allows you to pretty much stay level the whole time. So um, using this, I had come up with an idea. We'll turn, on, turn this on again for... I guess a kind of time card, sort of time code, barcode, Da Vinci code type machine. And I'm going to load up this this world and I'm going to share with you the latest design, which I'm super excited for. I still love this thing though. Turn the lights off. Let's go. <laughs> so awesome. Oh, we're going to flip. We're flipping. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Uh, so this is the next design so I have got there's a few things to this machine and there's it's a bit messy at the moment it's really a concept obviously most of the stuff I'm conceptualizing and then trying to refine at a later date when things are a little bit better there's there's some limitations in the game which I'd like to see um, fixed I guess or some things added that might would really help with things uh, being automated and and making my life a little bit easier especially for something like this and I'll talk about that in a minute in the background you might see a little hovercraft that's Armitage just goofing around in my worlds but this is a digital display like you would see on an old school alarm clock so you've got seven sections of the actual um, display which will change depending on what input so if we get down here see I've conveniently made it in the shade as well so you don't see any light on it Ugh. Really annoying. After I spent all this time building, I was like, oh, I built it on the wrong side of the sun. And unfortunately, in the world of of uh, Scrap Mechanic, the sun does not move just yet. But this is the inner workings. This is the back end of the lovely display. And this here is, we'll go from this side, is our time code, our punch code. It's kind of messy. 
and I'll get to refining that soon. This is the best thing I could come up with. So the idea with the scissor lift, I wanted to use a punch card like this, which makes more sense with a row of sensors, all right? I, I guess I'll explain how this works. So the, the sensors are connected up to each individual bar on this seven part display. And as you actually move uh, things in front of its path, they will turn depending on what you've coded. So using the scissor, scissor lift idea, I really wanted to put a time code card or a time card or whatever you want to call it, sort of the, the uh, programming on a card like this and then lift it vertically up and down. But things were a little bit difficult. Uh, I, I have to really refine it. You have to get in there with the with the mathematics and I'm not really mathematically minded, to be honest. I'm pretty bad at maths. I'm pretty sure you've all seen me count something horrible and be a massive peanut. So this is this is my last resort to get this thing working. I just crashed, which kind of sucks, but nothing was broken by the looks of it. All right, so let's explain a little bit more about the bar, the uh, actual display. It is simply put, uh, there's like, there's three parts to it. There's, I guess, the axle down the middle connected to this bearing here. And then each side, there's two faces attached to the axle. You have a blank side and then you have sort of a lit up side with the yellow. And all it does is simply flip back and forth. If I can see look at that, just flips back and forth. I'll walk my head in front of this one. That's all it does. So once I walk in front of this sensor, you see the light goes on and it flips back and forth, back and forth. So that's the display. Very, very simple idea, I guess. Kind of hard to execute. I spent all afternoon mucking around with this one. Uh, so then what we do is we, uh, like I said, I programmed all this stuff in here and connected electric motor up with the slowest speed on it like that. Uh, it, it is very primitive. I use that word often in this game so far because I haven't refined much at all. So we'll s simply switch this on and then we're going to scoot around the front and this thing will start counting. And you'll see. All right, zero. So then... What is going on? Oh, I messed up. I done peanutted. Okay. What I did there is I didn't actually reverse the bearings on this, uh, on the, on the code. So we need to actually send this guy back to where he was. So he just runs along this rail and the sensors pick up where there is missing and not so missing data. And then this one here. Okay. So now we should be back at one. That is one. Excellent. Get away from that. Look at all the look at all the lines going everywhere. It just looks more complicated than it actually is. And we'll push this button here. We should start to see. So that should be two, three, then a four, and five. Obviously, I'm not going to count. You guys should know how to count to ten. But this is the this is the display. Um, the seven. Just making sure everything's working. And you hear there's a little bit of crushing going on in the background. Zero. So that's the end of it. Now that that's not a number. That's actual end of this thing uh, working. I could probably get rid of that also. Uh, what I can actually do, <clears throat> maybe, no. I'm not gonna mess with it. Let's, uh, let's reverse this one more time and you can watch it do its thing. Uh, it will actually probably cycle through. So here we go, it should be zero, nine, eight. So the zero denotes a 10. So what I'd like to do is connect up more. So you'd have a four digit display and we could possibly have a timer. How cool would that be? A timer within scrap mechanic. I really like it. It's one and then should be it. I turn you off. And that's pretty much my design. So there's, that, that's it for now. Now there's a, like I said, there's a few limitations. Uh, Armanage and I were discussing ways of doing this. We were thinking about reversing these two roles here. So having the sensors on a movable cart as opposed to having them on a stick here. Um, problem with that being is because this actual cart itself is a separate entity to the structure, you cannot physically connect these two up. You cannot connect these sensors to any of this stuff here, you see? How that's a separate entity, but you can connect it to anything else that's connected to this structure on the floor, which kind of sucks, and same goes vice versa. So there's no way you could put the sensors on the moving cart and connect them to the display, which really does does put a damper on things. Um, what else? I don't know. There's there's a few other things that that I could think of that, that I thought of at the time. That's obviously not a number. Let's let's reverse this again. You can watch it one more time because it's cool. I'm pretty chuffed with this design, and I'm open to suggestions. If you guys can think of any way of improving this, please let me know in the description below. Um, 
What else was there? You might hear in a minute, as I was saying, the crushing. Should he happen here? So you hear that. There's um, a small collision happening with the corner of these displays, which, uh, which, which sucks. Um, and I think I can get around that, but I need to redesign or recreate the entire interface. But yeah, I I'm pretty pretty stoked with this design. Um, there's plenty of things I guess you could do with this concept itself. You could uh, play messages, you could code in all sorts of different stuff into this game. And I got this idea from Minecraft as well. This is not new, this is just adapted, I guess. So that's it for this episode, guys. I'm actually gonna plan, on, I'm gonna plan on doing a tutorial for this stuff. Like I said, once I refine everything, once I have stuff worked out, all the nuts and bolts and the irons creased, irons creased? I am just uh, way too tired, a massive with peanut, basically. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is the first of many, I guess, I, I wanna try and work on this display and the coding side of things. It'd be super fun. If you're new here, if you're finding out this for the first time, please subscribe. I'm going to play more Scrap Mechanic. This game is so awesome. If you haven't already, go check it out on Steam. But that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.